I'm Carla Workman. This is Indifferently Depraved Book Club. With us this week in our studio audience, uh, we have Ben. Say hi, Ben. Hi. All right. So do you want to introduce this week's selection, Carla? All righty. We've got a graphic novel this time. It's The Green River Killer, a true detective story. It's uh, by Jeff Jensen and Jonathan Case. And Jeff Jensen is actually the son of Tom Jensen, who is the lead detective on The Green River Killer task force and that's really he's the main subject of the book really it's mostly from oh, like, yeah. his story it's amazing access um i meant to of course look up more than i actually did but i don't know how long he spent interviewing him to compile this but it's impressive it's a very it's a very personal story yeah deeply Definitely. i like how it starts out and he's a young, young man, and he's, you know, he's courting his wife, and it's just real wholesome and sweet. And then, <laughs> <laughs> well, things take a turn for the worse. It's an interesting story to me. It's about a man who really, he, he's such an Ahab. You know, he sees his, his white whale in Gary Ridgeway, and he really just has his purpose in life in a way that someone like me who works in an office and, and does silly shows on stage, you know, I don't have that kind of drive in my life, and it's. Oh, that, isn't that why we like true crime is like that whole I think so the think morality so. yeah it's a, it's a very very common story the one detective who chases him you know both in fiction and in real life accounts like this like Tom Jensen was a real guy who worked on this case every day for 20 years everybody was really critical of him because they couldn't find him forever it was yeah 20 years 19 years 82 to 2001 something yeah some <laughs> impressive span like that yeah so everyone was like, oh, the police aren't doing anything. And then you see it from the perspective of, no, this man really it consumed his whole life for two decades. No, and it was the most expensive. Ex- $15 million. Yes. They spent <laughs> an astronomical sum. They worked and worked and worked yeah. on this. It's uh, And that was in eight years because they shut it down in 1990. So they spent that much money in that time. Okay. And that's, that's the thing about law enforcement has to work at a certain level removed from the public. So... If you can't announce things. Oh, I think that's developed into a pretty huge problem today, wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely <laughs> do. And people feel so frustrated. It's like that um, uh, Aaliyah Lunsford, the little girl from Weston. Mm-hmm. She, she disappeared from the Weston area like, like six or seven years ago. And it was last year. They finally had like the first real announcement in the case since she disappeared. She disappeared. And, you know, there was the search as it developed initially. And then just nothing. Yeah. No leads. They released a, a projected sketch, like an age progression sketch, and then they announced they arrested her mother. So they work the whole time. We just don't. Yeah. We're not privy to it. We're not supposed to be. It's true. It's like if results don't come in, everyone thinks there must be some shortcoming instead of just the remoteness of how hard it is. Like, especially a serial killer, for example, often they kill strangers. And if you're killed by a stranger, no suspect, no lead. There's really no way to link it to you at all, which is how he can get away with something like 71 murders is what he confessed to. Yeah. Suspected and, of over 90. And this this goes back to our lost... Uh, our lost, <laughs> lost episode. Our lost first, first episode <laughs> um, that we're going to re-record and get out to you guys as soon as possible. <laughs> but Dennis Rader, in the same way as Gary Ridgway, was not this criminal mastermind. No. He was very, he seemed to me a very anxious, worked up, sweaty, sticky, weird freak. Like, that was just his whole thing to me. Just like a big, nervous rat. But Gary Ridgway is just, uh, he's just... Disconnected from life. Yes, he's unplugged. He's, yeah. I don't know if they, well, I'm certain they did massive psychological testing on him, but I'd like to know, like, what his, what his IQ scores and I know. everything. I'd love yeah. to know. Because it seems to me he must be a very low functioning, average to low functioning. I'm not saying he's, like, borderline intellectual oh, functioning. Manual but, labor, factory worker. Yeah. And I know we were talking about serial killer stereotypes. They don't yes. kill another race. Another one is high intellect. Everyone thinks yes. that every serial killer is like Ted Bundy or like the charismatic genius IQ. 
his not really true his whole thing was just the incredible randomness of it and just the victim profile the only thing they had in common they were sex workers and you know this is pre a lot of biometric and dna things that we now have a lot of physical evidence whereas we didn't before even in cases where like this we don't have common links and things like mm -hmm. that yeah, he was convicted with DNA. They eventually the, yes. the improvement of technology. They took a sample from 1987. Same thing with Dennis Rader. Yeah, they they had things no one realized at the time. I mean, he Dennis Rader left semen all over a crime scene, just sprayed it the fuck everywhere. Only well, knew they didn't have any semen to compare it to. Joyously, he like, kept that. track of his semen. <laughs> oh God! He knew the police didn't have it. Uh, so, yes. Gary Ridgway's banal, bland. Ugh. And it's... It's it, almost scarier, isn't it? It is. Because to me, there's not any sort of frenetic desire to. It's just the slow, steady hunger. That's Even all it is. Interviews. It's just, it's a basic, it's that Maslow's hierarchy of need. And he's got this extra block squished in there, you know? And uh, it's, you need to strangle some hookers from behind. Yeah. That's, Food, water, strangling hookers. <laughs> And it was just a machine set in motion, and he was just going to do it. That's in the in their interviews. That's pretty much how he describes it. You know, I would go. I had to trick them to get them in the truck, and because I wanted to uh, kill them. He talks about it in such blunt language like that. Oh yeah, I just picked them up and killed them. And why? He, uh, what do you mean why? You know. And he's another one like Jeffrey Dahmer that like they're just like you're like is it a ruse or not? Because like Dahmer was always like you know questioned about uh, John Walsh, Adam Walsh. They would question him about oh, Adam Walsh. Oh, right. The and Unsolved Mysteries. Another, it's America's Most Wanted. America's John Most Walsh. Wanted. Yes. Unsolved Mysteries is Robert Stack. But, um, and he would just be like, look, I've always been honest with you. I've given you every detail, volunteered information. Why would I lie to you? At the same time, would he have a reason to lie, don't you think? Admitting to, to killing John oh, Walsh's no. a, child. A killer who had killed a child would have absolutely no reason to lie. But he had killed children. Yeah. He killed 14-year-olds. It just didn't matter because they were brown. See what I'm saying? John Walsh's child, however, would be a different thing. Don't you think that he would be treated differently as an inmate? Yeah. and uh, Compared to somebody who killed my... Like, that whole thing with... No, it's true. And that's why he chose prostitutes as victims, the Green River Killer. Ugh. That's how he managed to kill so very many, with no one ever putting, you know... Yes. <laughs> that's another... It that's was easy to dismiss as a waste of money because of who the victims were. Why pursue it? It's yeah. a high-risk lifestyle. Could be anybody. <laughs> That whole attitude. Ugh. Many of them are still unidentified. I mean, mm -hmm. that's how little mm -hmm. society and people give a shit about these women. So he chose good victims, just like Jeffrey Dahmer. And that's how they managed to get away with these numbers. Like we're talking about one is how do the police, the police don't do anything. One is really hard. Two, they choose people that society is inclined to ignore. Yes, their victim and profile purposely. That inherently helps them get away with it. Yeah. I mean, Jeffrey Dahmer moved into... Uh, mostly black area, his whole housing development and the neighborhood that he mm -hmm. lived in. And he just helped himself to minority children. Uh, minority Be gay sex worker teens. Yes. Gee, the police are really going to care if one of them goes missing. I mean, the one 14-year-old that he killed that the police returned to him, Yeah. Dahmer had been convicted um, a few years earlier of molesting that child's older brother. So that astounds me. And the police delivered him back to Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment. Yes. And then made terrible jokes about it. And it's really gross. And for a time, those dudes were suspended. But they were later reinstated. And I think they even received awards later on. Uh, probably. That year, the following year, uh, for their performance. It's just, yeah. okay, sure, whatever. <clears throat> I mean, something like the Green River Killer getting away with it. You know, the bodies were found years later when they were decomposed. That's not really police misconduct, even though they couldn't find him. However, delivering a half-drugged 14-year-old victim back to Jeffrey Dahmer. I, I think that probably qualifies as police misconduct. Yes, when people from the same housing complex are like, um... That's a little boy. That's a, I think that's a child. Are you sure that's an adult? Because I think that that's a child. Nah, these fags are catfighting again. That was pretty much the police oh, response yes. to it. So, mm. uh... They just laughed it off. Yeah. It was, yeah. You can Instead listen of to that. recognizing a violent crime. <laughs> yeah, you can listen to that online, and it's pretty disheartening. Um, so, yeah, Ridgeway, this book, let's talk about the book a little bit. We've been talking about the related lore. 
But this is gorgeous. Black and white. It's huge. Over 200 pages, I think. It's yes. really big. It's gorgeous. I was telling Carla while I was looking at it, it made me want technology that doesn't exist yet. And I don't know if they'll quite make it, but I wish I had a wall that was just a huge screen and I could like read it frame by frame or page by page on it. Just like lay on my couch or walk around and look at it like a huge, huge art installation. It's beautiful. Someday. Yeah, I can't be far away. I can't be the only person that wants that to exist. But you wanted to t open up talking about one of the splash pages. Oh, yeah. Well, I love graphic novels anyway. But I think the, the build up to that first one in the opening sequence where Gary Ridgway, he was never convicted or even suspected of it in any way. He just pretty much stabbed a little boy when he was 16 and got away with it. Oh, God, it gave me chills. And that's how the book begins. And he's like recalling that incident. And then it flashes to him like disposing of a body in modern day in the woods. Like how his formative year, that, that incident, took, he took the boy into the woods to be isolated and hidden. And yes. stabbed him. He approached him in a park. Yeah. In his own hometown. Yeah. He always worked in his own town and still got away with it. It's bizarre. Uh, he was never caught for that at all. No, never even suspected. No one had any idea he did it until he confessed to it himself after he'd been apprehended. Like, oh, well, I guess this is really where it all began. It's just, it's chilling. He's this little skinny, weird, prepubescent, mustache-having, sweaty teen. He stabs this little boy. It's so fucking gross. Yeah. And he said, I just wanted to see what it would feel like to kill someone. To the child. After to the child. Him. The stabbed child bleeding on the ground. That's a dude you don't want to know. No. It was very dangerous but to hitchhike I, along the Pacific Highway in Washington. I I can't believe people were still doing it. Oh, hitchhiking? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. After Bundy, how could you even fucking <laughs> hitchhike? We have another Ted Bundy on our hands. And then Ted wait, Bundy. Were they were they contemporaries? Wait, uh, he, wait, was, wait, wait, wait. Uh, he was after him, and they were That's like, oh, no, they compared it to it in all the media of course just like no, every killer right. charles manson when but that happened bundy helped this investigation yeah uh, yeah well he said he said that he could <laughs> oh no yeah, that was just him being a wanker <laughs> he was just being a wanker no he just wanted to get out and like kick his heels up and maybe yeah. escape again the only thing he was right about was the necrophilia and you know lucky guess well and he also pointed out the clusters and said he did that and identified why he was doing that that he was coming back to the clusters too Mm. to have sex with the mm. corpse, to rape the corpses. Yuck. And he did. He was right. Bundy was right. And that's what he Ridgeway was, right was up about to. That. But I think mostly he just wanted to try to escape. <laughs> we wanted to talk about those those reveals about like the having sex with the corpses Ew. and the final big reveal, which we got to talk about the denouement in a moment. We're the ones to call and make it feel good. We make wrestling in this best websites. Pay more if you want with us to dumb move. We're gonna make your website shine. A website that works feels good. Get your website fixed at Cucumber and Company. Unlimited updates and no upfront fees will be sure to kickstart your heart. So if your website is trash, don't go away mad. Call Cucumber and Company today. 304-250-0123. And online at cucumberandcompany.com. So do you, um, the panels that are like leading up to him, like, how did he frame the whole, oh, yeah, well, I just kind of wanted to go back and I didn't want to have sex with him. What was it? <laughs> what's his crazy, what's his fucked up crazy shit? He, he said it wasn't necrophilia. Oh, how was it not? You can have sex with a dead body and it's not necrophilia. And Gary Ridgway is here to tell you why. The problem was I want to have sex all the time. Now... I can't go kill a new hooker every time I want to have sex with somebody. That'll get me caught. Shit, I already killed 90. So this is a smart, sort of economical... Economical approach to corpse management. A applying rational decision-making to um, standard supply demand chains. Right. And risk assessments. Right. Oh my God, freak. And this is what makes us uncomfortable is that another Economical decision, another human being can commodify us in such a way. Yeah. Oh, welcome. Welcome to our world, everybody. When, oh, right. Yeah, right. When toxic masculinity really goes wrong. I've never I've never considered that people see me as like consumptible pieces. <laughs> Sometimes literally. Uh, very literally. Yeah. Uh, there well, was he only took body parts to confuse the police, he said. 
Hmm. Um. Question mark. Well, see, that's the thing. Is like I can like side eye everything, but sometimes their weird shit has to be true. I can see someone being like, "This is not my thing." Kind of like Dennis Rader yeah. casting about yeah. for his thing. He's like, "This is not my thing," but I'm just gonna apply it to my work life. He he actively tried to confuse the police, and on top true. of his 48 life sentences, he got 48 10 year sentences for evidence tampering. Being a in pain all in the of fucking his cases. Ass. For, for fucking us up, basically. And costing 15 million fucking taxpayer he was dollars. Like driving bodies to Portland. He was like stealing ashtrays or cigarette butts from ashtrays and littering the kill site <laughs> with them to plant DNA. That is brilliant. He was making fake footprints. He was doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I mean, that kind of thing. There's a meme that I've seen on five, uh, Facebook 5,000 times. I've seen it in my, my Murderino meme group 5,000 times. It's like the little girl that asks if she donates her hair to Locks of Love and that person commits a crime. Is she going to be suspected for... <laughs> because of... The, and the, everyone's like, DNA's in your f- hair falling comes on your hair train. Shut up. It's mm, funny. Nerds. At the same time, just shut up everybody because I'm sick of seeing that meme. But... Um, Valid. But then you think, God, are we going to get to that point in our lives where we have to worry about like every fingernail? I cut my nails at work all the time. I know that's really gross. Well, hopefully you don't work with a serial killer who likes to transplant evidence. I have eczema, so I have to constantly cut my claws back. I'm just going to have my nails surgically removed, actually. What do you guys think about that? I get the nail beds like tattooed. Like clawed like a cat? Yes. So we keep the knuckle, though. They do. They remove the first knuckle. It's terrible. That's even more depressing than Gary Ridgway murdering 90 transient women. I know. Finding out that you've cut the tips of your cat's fingers off, it's really bad. The Green River Killer wouldn't even do that. I know, right? PSA. Now, and he had a family, Gary Ridgway. Oh, my God. He had three families, really. Count his wives. Three wives. How does a man like that get married three times? Oh, my God. They all seem to. They all seem to have a whole string of women. Ted Bundy pulling that hat trick and getting his <laughs> girl that dumped him and broke his heart to accept his wedding proposal and then being like, nah, peace. I love that story. I'm sorry. That guy sucks. That's kind of funny. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ted Bundy, that guy sucks. That guy sucks. But that's, <laughs> that's kind of fucking funny. No, it's really scary. He, that's just yeah. <laughs> but it's I mean, it's both. <laughs> It's both. It is both. That's some fucked up shit. Yeah. Oh, God. It gives me chills. Statistically speaking, like, we got to know some... I do know a killer. I do know someone that's killed somebody. My aunt's neighbor killed people. I don't know that I know any killers. Statistically, you have to at least be in the same room with one several times in your life. Don't you think? Like right now? We may. could kill. I think any of us could kill. I was thinking about that the other day. But not for fun. I like these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone could. A crime of passion, as they say. Yes. Red Ball, Minority Report. Necessity, self-defense, negligence. But just to kill someone because you want access to a dead body or you want to experience killing someone. I don't don't know if I could do that. I think it's interesting that Gary Ridgway, up until the end of the interview series, he denied that that's why he did it. (sighs) He wouldn't admit he actually, like, sought to kill these women. He was always just it, like, oops. well, they they got mad at me, or I didn't like what they said, and I Snapped. accidentally strangled them all to death. I just got so angry, I fucked up 71 times, maybe more, we can't decide. Yeah, the convicted of 48, and then they added a 49th through DNA matching. He confessed to... 65 and then said no it's probably more like 71 it's a nice number to land. it's like you're playing the price is right trying to get as close <laughs> to to whatever it is without going, without going over 71 70 62 70, 72 77 48 49 i don't fucking know man i just and then the people. police are like probably over 90 and that's based the best on missing people and unidentified bodies we have no explanation for that could you know from the time frame now this shit's legit. They moved this dude into the police station yeah. to conduct these. They'd arrested him. They had him with DNA evidence. They were holding him. And they were like, look, just cooperate. Help us identify these people. Let's get them all dug up wherever the hell you fucking left. And let's find their bodies. Let's bury them. Let's let their families know. And he's like, oh, okay, sure. I can do that. Okay. <laughs> this is like that. Like. He just has a room that puts the mattress. Are you going to get me some boots? It's 
it's astounding and they're there's they're a, like there's a scene in the graphic novel where he's like well if i have to walk around in the woods well he has these shoes are gonna work well he, yeah he has like some like velcro 80s shoes or something i don't know he's got a point what the hell he's got a point he's got a point he needs some boots if he's gonna walk around the goddamn woods this is ridiculous well, you know they ultimately agree with that assessment it's true which is funny. Just one of the many entertaining scenes but that's the thing is like that's the thing is that gary ridgeway it never occurs to him to be treated any less than a human being it's true a human being and i have needs and we're in a situation and you're the person that can give me what i need and i need boots and there's no shame or guilt in it what a perspective i know there's no humility Dahmer seemed enough had enough sense like a dog to act shame that he pissed on the carpet you know bundy he's just a cage snake oh i think so too oh god yeah he's nothing but lizard brain <laughs> and a very thin veneer of a human being over it i don't say shit like that often because i don't go for that whole oh they're monsters and they're demons thing but i do believe in lizard brain i do believe in people just no impulse control yes no emotion Here's nothing that we identify as being societal human get along with everybody kind of traits there's there's a chip in evolution that they just like completely skipped He's, oh wait yeah it's a it's a brain deficit i agree oh absolutely Absolutely. Something happens developmentally. Yes. Because how else would you end up like that? And especially like Gary Ridgway. After you're apprehended, confronted with like crime scene photos, anecdotes of crying relatives. Why have you done this? Well, I had sex with them and I didn't like it. Really? Is that all? Yes. Well, yeah. I didn't have a great orgasm, so I had to... And they talked to him for five months and he's still just like, nope, that's pretty much it. I just got upset. Just a little tantrum. The denouement of the story. It's not the last time that um, that the detective sees Ridgeway because he resumes finishing up the project afterwards. But there's that epiphany moment that we kind of understand that maybe Ridgeway is confronting himself a little bit there. I wonder if that's manufactured for the story. Or, or if it's really, they claim it's based on the interviews, but I'm sure that's not literally word for word. But it would be interesting if that part was true, where by like pretty much proving to him through repeating his own account back to him, which is a common police tactic. <laughs> uh, so maybe it is true because they do do that. Yes. And you're like, well, if you knew this woman had to leave to go to work and you knew leaving would upset you and you invited her over anyway. You, you told her, her on purpose. Yes, yeah, so you told her yourself, that's fine. Come on over anyway. You invited her over to kill her. So you're full of shit. So you're full of shit. He's like, you're right. Who knows? Who knows if it really happened? I don't know. I don't know either. Let's hope so. Oh, my God. I'm sure it's dramatized. But hopefully there was a true moment like that where they finally got him to admit, you can't accidentally kill 90 people. No, yeah. After a while... Something is um something about the situation is being manufactured and it's not it's not coming from them. You could have not killed them. It's astounding the way that psychologists have to walk people around themselves and back again. Sometimes many times. Especially to this degree. Good oh, God. God almighty. No, what? he was very pig headed. Like I'm saying, he just doesn't have a whole lot of insight into himself. He's not super intelligent. He's not making connections all over the place. They made me mad. I killed him. I had to get away with it. Well, what? What about that? Doesn't make sense to you. And like that splash page you were talking about, it's the one that the shirt uh, is pulled up over the face. Yes. So he's one of those. He killed people from behind. He strangled these sex workers from behind. When they were unsuspecting and when he was already, you know, applying his weight, which was, of course, larger than theirs and he's mm -hmm. stronger. And then when he would lay out his bodies and his clusters, the ones that he would apparently want to be intimate with afterwards, he would put the shirt over. Their he can't look at their faces right. when he's killing them. He can't look at them when they're dead. And I think that that's just. And later it manifested into burying the bodies. So he wouldn't have sex with well, them because he felt shame about that, too. Didn't they basically bust him out that he did dig them up sometimes? <laughs> I think I swear to fucking God that's in there. They were like, are you sure about that? You sure you didn't dig him up. Oh, he probably did. Oh, because, yeah. He could know, well, it was the detachment thing. There's no such thing as an accidental serial killer. There's no such thing as a happenstance necrophiliac. That it just doesn't exist. You you are these you have these compulsions within yourself. 
the f- oh, I happened upon a dead body, and I was eh, the just fact- like Dennis Rader, like you said, the removal. Like that's not you know, if it if it's not it's not me, and if I have to admit that it's me, well, it wasn't weird for whatever reason. Wouldn't you have sex with a corpse rather than pay for another hooker? Come on, it's a no-brainer. The fact that you can get yourself to be comfortable with being a man who murders women at a rate of about once every six weeks for a span of five years in your own home and you pick them up in your own vehicle, bring them to your own home, or even one time picking them up, picking up a woman when this child was in the truck, Mm -hmm. taking her into the woods, having sex with her, murdering her and leaving her there. But you cannot go ahead and say, I did it because I wanted to. And then I fucked their dead corpses. That's what you can't get to that. Like, that's just the line you can't cross in your own mind about who you are as a person. I think it's saying it to other people. Things are harder to admit than they are to do. Everybody knows that. Yes. Everybody who's ever told a lie knows that. But it's still just astounding. You're sitting in a room. The whole fucking world knows what you've done. Crime scene photos, DNA, confession. It's it's all public. Well, it's all public information. Everybody knows what you did. It's not as bad as you think it is. You just don't understand. But okay, I guess I don't fucking understand. It's true. Well, yeah. No one wants to understand. I'm good on that. Actually, I'm not. I want to read your fucking psych evaluation. This panel, he has a couple of these where... Yeah, the art's really good. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. He's speaking to different women that he's brought into his bedroom. It's like one conversation is played out and the characters change. And there's another page with all their faces sort of underwater or melting, melding into each other. It's just... It sort of portrays how he just thought of them as interchangeable. Yep. Um, just an idea, just the thing. But looking at the art, they're just so beautiful and everybody looks different. That's an advantage of graphic novels. Oh, it's I, gorgeous. You know, that's a great way to convey that point of he didn't remember who they were. It didn't he matter didn't to care. him. Their identity really was but, inconsequential. But at the same time, it really drives home that they were just distinct. And, yeah. you know, I look at these people and I'm like, oh, she looks like a really nice person. You know, it's gorgeous. It's all black and white and it's very simple. I like the use of sort of the negative. I do too. When when Ridgeway's first introduced and he's talking, he's in a black background, like sort of, you know, I think underscoring the idea that he's evil. Yes. He is. Well, it is, that he's in darkness. Yes. I don't use the whole evil thing, just like I don't do the monster animal thing. The weird immeasurable morality of it. Uh, I don't know. I'm an atheist, so, so I just don't use the word evil. But yes, he's a very bad man. <laughs> and he's definitely surrounded by darkness so some very beautiful these birch trees that come throughout the whole the entire graphic novel it's just gorgeous it looks you know this reminds me of um this reminds me of bill waterson ah and the backgrounds that he would draw for the forests in calvin and hobbs mm-hmm. do you see what i mean yes i do see what you mean i love it and that's the compliment because waterson draws some beautiful things black and white working Sim- in simple languages, you you end up saying some really elegant things, and I think that this story has been very elegantly told. I know that um, characters throughout it have been collapsed into others. So there's one mother who is waiting for news of her daughter throughout mm-hmm. this man's entire career. And I'm sure that represents many people because yeah. you know I get a sense of this man's character. I know it's fictionalized, but. It's a good blending, I think. You it know, is. Obviously, it's not a factual resource that you well, it's could like, write a report from. but Like in Cold Blood, mm-hmm. the whole fictionalized true crime yeah. thing. And he seems like a very... Um, someone who really felt like a, a connection to everybody involved with this. But his whole journey with her, of course, you know, she represents the women, I guess, that he was so able in the end to tell what happened to their children. Mm-hmm. I love that story. It's a super, super sad book. It is sad. And I think it's interesting that Jeff Jensen's a journalist, but since this story is so personal to him, I guess maybe it's more easy to put in a narrative form. And I was thinking to myself, it would be weird to go from being a journalist to writing a graphic novel, but Jonathan Case is comic artist and writer. So I guess that's how he managed to resolve that. And you can really tell the pacing of it's so good. It, the, yes. The storytelling which in comics is like from panel to panel, how you pace it, basically. Kind of more like a movie. 
And I think he does a really good job of that. There's like the an actual build up and a payoff with his use of like the half page or the full page splash page. And it's like, I think he just does a really great job of the emotional payoff of the story. I oh. cried when I read it. Oh, no, it's touching. The art underscores it. It it's it's a wonderful piece of noir, it really is. Um, reading this story about the whole Green River killer, it kind of reminds me of the Gilgo Beach murders, like the cluster of bodies found. They were all sex workers. Of course, that was just one cluster of like five, maybe six girls, and then parts of bodies that had been found years before the other pieces in other places. It's very strange. They don't know if it's the same serial killer or multiple serial killers using the same dump site. But I'm wondering, see, that's, that's what I'm wondering about. I'm like, will we have such a prolific serial killer in our time now that we have the whole DNA thing? Or do you think technology made it impossible? Do you think that we've advanced so much that we catch these people quickly enough? Or are they just getting by? I think Gary Ridgway is a very special case. It's not yes. like the next one has 45. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he is well beyond any other number of convictions, you know, especially if you take the co- the confession number of 71. Yes. It's three times, you know, what most others are well, even his, known for. His whole thing was he was just like, it's 20 years ago. Yeah. You know, the police are taking him around and all these uh, sightseeing missions trying to identify spots which is nuts I mean it's like 20 years the whole topographies have changed and oh no, this is a baseball diamond or a park or a fucking airfield now you know and even if their bodies had not been disturbed what about like wildlife dragging them off mm-hmm. you know it's just but I guess they did manage to find some things I heard There's so many people when you really think about it but I, I don't I guess my point is I don't think technology is what stands in the way of it. I think will another Gary Ridgway be born is more the question. Or made. Whatever happens to serial killers. Both. There are people out there with that bloodthirst. You know, because like you know, Bundy and he were, I think, sort of active-ish in the same time. There was overlap there. Um, yes. Dahmer's in the 90s. Gene was what, the 50s? The 60s? He didn't kill very many people. No. What a weirdo. He only killed two, and the rest was exhumation. He had a low number. I believe so, yes. Two, three. That's what we know. He potentially, what, he killed his brother, potentially, Mm. in a fire? Something like that. Oh, God. Who even knows? He was such a fucking freak. We'll have to talk about him someday. He makes me fucking puke. He's so gross. Oh, he didn't kill anyone. He just dug up a bunch of bodies and made a corset out of the skin. A nipple belt. He made a nipple belt. Nipple belt is probably the strangest one. He had a box of vulvas. Okay, that's the strangest one. I don't know. (laughs) I think maybe nipple belt is just more creative. Collecting vaginas before (laughs) making a belt of nipples, but maybe that's just me. Skulls. I don't know. I don't know which is more outlandish. Skull cereal balls. Yeah, that's just practical. (laughs) Just like. Yeah. Having sex with the prostitutes you've already killed. Instead of the prostitute you haven't killed yeah. yet. I mean, you know, Penny, you can call these people low-functioning if you want, but they do come up with some great ideas. <laughs> Is it, we call it a life hack. I'm cutting all this you ha- out. You have all these skulls laying around. I'm cutting all this <laughs> shit out. Everything after Ed Gein is gone. Uh, we sound like awful people. Which we are. We're indifferently depraved. Very much so. Everybody out there that... are not ha- being so indifferent, though. Everyone out there that hates us and is listening to this podcast just so they can say, look how stupid. Look, oh, can you believe she said that? Yeah, well, fuck you, too. I said, <laughs> if I had a bunch of skulls lying around, I would make cereal bowls. Absolutely. What else are you going to do with them? You can't leave them around. Ashtrays. For the poli- you can't put them in a filing cabinet like Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> I'm just going to file these away for later. Get this. I them under Z for I zombie have, sex slave. I don't have time right now. Let me get back to this you on Tuesday. This. this is gold. I'll file it under Tuesday. This is gold. Oh my god. Boxes of vaginas. Okay. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because we call vaginas boxes. It's a box of boxes. See box. how it makes more sense than the nipple belt, like I was saying. <laughs> uh, if I constantly refer back to it, you can't cut it out. I know, no, it has to stay there. Just the whole last 
last 15 minutes of the podcast are shit so i've got to leave the nipple. the nipple belt is is a popular trope in in true crime fandom apparently people crochet them oh no <laughs> Ipsy gone wrong. Etsy. 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 Ipsy's the makeup. Etsy's yes. the crochet air plant holders. Yes. Would you like an air plant? I was wondering. I was going to get one for myself. I don't know. Sure. I got a lot of plants. You could be an air plant person. See, this is way worse than nipple belt. Yeah. We're losing them. <laughs> <laughs> Now I talk about, I talk about boring shit on my other podcast. Or is that boring too and I should cut that shit out? <laughs> Let's just cut it all out. Let's cut the entire podcast. Two lost episodes. <laughs> okay. So, back to the Green River Killer. Back to the Green River Killer. First we got to remember what we were talking about. You can cut this out. I'll cut whatever I want out. <laughs> Scott's going to be sitting here like Jesus Christ. I know, right? I love you, honey. Um, so, yeah, technology. I don't I don't I think that's naive to think. Anytime you think anything's going to solve something, that's a dumb thing to think, right? Yeah, I think another serial killer could get away with killing that many. I just think only only special ones have the capacity to do that many. Well, when you're just a superficial sort of true crime fan, you don't realize how many biggies there are. You know what I mean? And then when you start bringing it down, there's like Here are the biggies. Israel Keys. Yeah. He, yeah, that's a lot. Um, Still not ninety. Chikatilo. I don't know how many. That Russian dude. He killed a fuck ton of people, didn't he? Um, we'll find out later, and I'll know if I'm right or wrong. That I feel like he killed a shit ton of people. He was like, oh, I know worldwide there are people who have killed hundreds of people. I, yeah, but it's got to be outside of war crimes. For, I think it still qualifies. I mean, it still does, but I just feel like it's a different Olympic uh, subdivision. I don't know. I think a lot of war <laughs> criminals just like killing people. Well, that's absolutely true. And they're given the Green River Killer excuse of mm. it was economical. I like to see I what people do. It. I like to see what people do when they don't have like a built-in excuse when they have to actually manufacture their own career. That's the kind of ones I'm interested in. When this is like the hard to admit part i really love i love sexual sadists like the, the sexual psychopaths those Who are doesn't i mean god oh yeah you <laughs> want look at my dating history anyways um <laughs> i'm definitely We'd like to apologize to anyone i know you, you all are great i love audience. all of you i wish you the best like those some of you i see you out there like succeeding and striving to survive i'm just so proud of you this is where scott's gonna roll his eyes oh yeah well he's probably been rolling his eyes the whole time well, but he loves me he actually thinks that we're adorable he thinks we're really Aww. cute so hopefully all of our fans out there all like all of them all 10 12 of you maybe all 12 of you you just love us too yeah Our patrons yeah um israel keys chickatillo um what about that fucker henry lee lucas but he was a confessor wasn't he he confessed to a shit ton of shit and they were that like he didn't do yeah they were like you didn't do that you didn't do that did he confess to adam walsh oh god didn't no, everyone? His, his partner did his dopey partner it was henry lee lucas and what was his dopey partner's name i don't know <sighs> some guy the guy that lived in the one that lived in florida and like killed all those teenagers like had all that crazy like sexual torture stuff and would anyways look that one up it's gross um this is a weird corner of the conversation we got to well you started the conversation with i love sexual sadists (laughs) so it's bound to go off in an interesting direction let's move it back to the more cheerful aspect of this uh what's the most cheerful thing we can talk about the beautiful artwork yeah Talked about that. It is cheerful. Yes. Uh, beautiful character development also. Talked about that already. Yeah. Are we out of cheerful things to talk about? Well, it's hard to get too cheerful mm-hmm. over America's most prolific serial killer. Um, his birthday is the day after mine. How about that oh, fun fact? Is that, that cheerful? That's coming up. Yours is what? February? Uh, 17th. And then awesome. February 18th is Green River Killer Day. He's still alive. He's still in prison. What day of the week is the 16th? The 16th is a Friday. The 17th, which is my birthday, is a Saturday. Okay. And And the 18th, which is Gary Ridgway's birthday, is a Sunday. Okay. We should record our next podcast the day after your birthday. Green River Killer Day. So join us next time on Indifferently Depraved Book Hour for new book, new murders, same old girls. Same old bitches.
It's time.